the running live show. It's Wednesday at 6.30. We're back at our usual time this week. And this week's chat is very exciting. It's a little bit of a departure from the norm. Usually on the show, we have athletes and we have experts. But this week, we've got two people from a brand. So we have got Bo Outshorn, who is the footwear product manager from Innovate. And we've got uh, Lee Proctor, who is the athlete manager and also the PR guy as well. So, um, hi guys, how are you doing tonight? Hi Claire, you all right? Good, good, that's fantastic. We can hear you loud and clear. Just give us a shout on the live chat here if there's any problems with the sound, but it's all sounding fine to me. Um, And so um, I'll just get some intros going on here. So Bo um, has a background in biomechanics, injury prevention and sports engineering. She's done a PhD on studded sports footwear. So um, some of the guys at Innovate call her Dr. Grip, which (laughs) that sounds like a superpower to me. (laughs) And um, yes, so uh, she completed the Dragon's Back last year. So she's no stranger to trail running shoes, obviously. And um, she's just returned from running across the Balkans over Christmas and New Year on the ancient Via Ignatia Trail um, with her ultra running friend, Lisa. So that's amazing. Well done, Bo. Thank you, Claire. (laughs) Sounds great. (laughs) And then we've got Lee, who is a trail runner and also a fell runner. He's been doing it for over 30 years. Would you believe it? You don't look look over 30, (laughs) really. (laughs) Do you? Um, He's done a Bob Graham round. Well, haven't we all, you know? And um, he's raced big events at home and abroad. And he helps Nikki Spinks out on all her double rounds as well. Um, So he has got plenty of running experience and it just shows shows that the people who work at Innovate actually go out and they do do the sport. So um, I'm really excited for this chat tonight. Um, I just have to shout out to top patron Guy Greatrex because it was his idea to get Innovate on the chat because he absolutely loves the brand. So he's already on the live chat here and I'm just popping up what he's just said. Um, He said, hi all, really excited for this one. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop talking now because it's over to you guys. Um, The first question that I have for you is just, can you us in a little bit on just the story of Innovate. How did the brand start? Yeah, um, so Innovate was founded in 2003 um, by a guy called Wayne Eady. Uh, he spotted a gap in the off-road running market um, for a shoe with better grip and he basically took the opportunity and, and, and went for it. Um, he took a bit of a gamble, um, designed a brand new shoe from the ground up um, which was totally focused on grip um, and yeah, it started selling it um, in the UK, in the Lake District primarily, um, attracting a lot of fell runners because the grip was so good and the shoe was so light and so natural. Fell runners absolutely loved it. Um, and, it and it sort of moved from there. And we've now been going 17 years. Um, and we've moved from, we're still obviously in fell running, but we've moved into trail running, um, hiking, uh, CrossFit, swim run, obstacle course racing. You know, we provide shoes now across a vast array of sports. Yeah, there are an incredible number of shoes. I remember back in the day, I got my first, I think it was a, was it the the Rock Light? I always get the Trail Rock and the Rock Light confused. Um, but yeah, was it the Rock Light back in the day? I remember having a pair of those. Yeah, it probably but, was, yeah. Both are still in the range, the Rock Light and the Trail Rock, yeah. It just goes to show, isn't it? It's like the shark. The shark hasn't changed since the time of the dinosaurs, so it's good that you've got a shoe that just hasn't changed because it does the the best job it can, basically. Mm. Um, So we have got a lot of questions from from patrons today, Um, but first of all, I just thought, I just want to give you um, guys a chance to go through the process of how you research a shoe and then design it and then all the way through to production. So it's just in intriguing and I know Bo sent me some nice pictures that we can use to illustrate this so do you just want to take us through that research process first of all? Yes yes this is a bit I really really love Claire (laughs) so um, the research phase actually comes from a lot of different um, angles so I get to come out to events like uh, UTMB I go to orienteering events in Finland and I work on the stand actually and I, I help people pick shoes and I really take inspiration from runners themselves. Um, then at the same time I run myself a lot, 
Um, I listen to people from retailers. I listen to our sales staff. I listen to customer services who gets all kinds of odd requests, to be honest. But sometimes there's some really good ideas in there. Um, and then we start this process about two years before a shoe actually comes to the shop. Um, and I write a product brief for the designer. So I'm not a designer, I'm a researcher originally. I did a PhD, like you said. Um, and this product brief has all kinds of things in it. They're really, they're really cool, like sort of A3 size documents where I say like, oh, we want to have a shoe for this type of runner. But also what we think about first is like, where's that runner gonna run? Because we need to always make sure that it has the best grip on the best terrain. So I always think about what kind of terrain is this runner gonna run on? And then make sure that we have the, the, the specific lock pattern. So the cleats are the right shape and the right depth to give the best grip for the runner. Um, and then you kind of move upwards in the shoe, so then you get the midsole, so that's the cushioning bit. So if you're gonna be running on harder terrain, you probably want a bit more cushioning. If you're gonna be running on very soft terrain, you wanna be lower to the ground. So I kind of think about what is the runner gonna want and what are they gonna need from the terrain. And then you move on to, to the upper, so the bit that wraps your foot. And then it's all about what kind of comfort level will they want, how, what they're going to run through. Is it lots of bracken, so does it need to be super tough? Or is it going to be roost in summer, so we want more breathability? Uh, do we want a wide fit? Or do we want like um, a narrow fit and a really stable hold? So I kind of make this whole like sort of persona who is going to be wearing the shoe. And then um, once that briefing stage is done, um, I give it to the designers, and they that's kind of their handholds or sort of the the, the, the project that they're going to be designing within. Um, then what uh, one of our designers, Luke, often uh, does is he tapes up the shoes, and I think you've got a picture for that for people well, to see. Let's see. Is it called F Light Tape? Yeah. Okay, let's put this up here. Oh, right. Oh, that's actually a shoe made of tape. I didn't realise that when it first yeah. came through. Okay, um, so tell us about that. Up with white tape, so you can then sketch on top of the shoe. I can see in a 3D, like, what it looks like. Because um, he told me this afternoon, I asked him, what's his favourite part in the design stage? And he was like, when the design I have in my head actually turns onto the paper, and just that process of, like, visualising it, it makes it really real. Um, and then he usually go. They usually go through a design of a, a quite a few options. I think you've got across talent sketches. Yeah, so I'm well, just free hand sketching, but usually on the computer. So they have these tablets they can sort of you know digitally sketch with, um, and they get all these options. Um, and then we go through I think about four review stages. Um, internally and uh, at some point we also get some feedback from retailers when we want to know what direction they like um, and then we get to a final uh, design and that's when we send it to our factories basically. Ah, that's great. And if you if you aren't able to see the pictures right now, if you're just listening, um, what I just popped up was um, a drawing of a shoe with, oh no, that's not that one. Ah. Um, a drawing of um, a shoe with tape on it. Um, so that is um, a shoe, if you can imagine, just taped over with white tape and then drawn over the top so that you can sort of do a new shoe on an old shoe. Um, and then the other picture was a lot of different designs of the same shoe with different flares, different um, colors. Um, they all look really similar until you look closely. It's a bit of a spot the difference, um, but there's yeah. lots of shoes with lots of different uh, blue and black kind of flicks, um, yeah. different designs on. Um, that's I think the one with the really sketch interesting. up, that's a typical one where the brief was, I want an evolution, not a revolution. Okay. So it's going to change little things. Yeah. So we want like small improvements, like make it more modern, solve this issue that we know about, etc., etc. So therefore, like, we just get a small improvement. We also have sometimes projects, and those are the ones that designers really like, where it's like, you need to have a revolution, you want to have a fully new shoe. And I think the best example of that revolution was that f Light G300 that just came out. Ah, just, yes, I saw uh, that online, it looks really trendy. New, yeah, design and really, really, the departure from what we've done before. Uh, so it, it just really depends on what, what we need from the shoe. And then once we've sent the 
designs for the factory. We work with them really closely to get like 3D drawings. And I think you've got a technical drawing there, which you can just briefly show. Yeah. It's maybe less, less flashy for people, but it really specifies every millimeter of the outsole and the midsole because these are um, these outsoles and midsoles. Um, they need to be casted into um, from into like iron molds, and those molds need to be cut with a machine, really detailed. So we can't just like loosely design this. This needs to, this is like really precision work. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth of the, over those drawings, and we first cast it into um, like not an actual rubber yet, so, and then we, we review it over a couple of stages before we actually start making the, the metal molds. Um, yeah, did you also want to know more about the factory process, you said? Yeah, it's really fascinating that so much goes into it, isn't it? It's just, I, I, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> so you, you get those, everything is cast um, in iron casts um, for the soul. Um, and yeah, yeah, more, more things about how it actually goes into the factory would be really interesting. Yeah, so um, we work with them uh, with multiple rounds of samples. So that's where I come in much stronger again. So uh, once we've got a sample, we review it um, on whether it does what we think it wants to do. But also I get quite a few pairs of wear test samples and I send them out to runners. Um, you have to be our wear test size. Sadly, what's um, that? Because I, I know Guy Greatrex will want to do oh, this. I don't know. He is, <laughs> yeah, lucky guy. But what size is it? Sorry, I didn't get that. A, a UK eight and a half. A UK eight and a half. Okay. Well, I'll make a note of that and check. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I sure. Broke feet a little bit, Claire. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> it's too big for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is for me too. Um, yeah. So you... what we have done is we test on uh, a variety of things, which is also why I send it to a wide range of runners, these shoes. So we wanna know about comfort, we wanna know does the shoe what I intended it to do. Um, we also have a couple of runners which are like really high mileage runners. Um, and they just, they put three to 500 miles into a shoe within a month and a half. Wow. And I just wanna like, I just wanna know, does it last? So yeah. um, I just challenge them. <coughs> How long does it take to break? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Try to break uh, the shoe. <laughs> try to break the shoe. Yeah, it's like the opposite of what most people want. Yeah, yeah. That's like a, that's a I want to know how many miles did you can you get out of this shoe? And um, yeah, they're uh, they're always really happy um, to be on our wear test list because they run so much that they run through shoes. So yes, well. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is good. It's nice collaboration. I really like that. It's like a really good back and forth with lots of runners. Um, so we go through uh, multiple like stages. It depends a little bit on the complexity of the shoe, how many rounds of samples we need to go through. So after every feedback from the wear testers and from the designers, we go back to the factory, we adjust, and then we get new samples. And then when we're when the shoe is ready, when we're happy with the durability, when we're happy with the comfort, uh, etc., then we actually bring it to the salespeople and they can start selling it. Before we actually do any other like, wear testing, we also lab test all of our materials independently. So they go through these like abrasion machines and stuff and like you need to have so and so many cycles and then they have to tear strength, so all like lab tests. I did a PhD in like footwear testing, so I mean that's the bit that I'm like very geeky about. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really interesting. Yeah, and we have one more picture that you um, asked. it's a 3D exploded view as well of yeah. a trail rock. Um, uh, yeah, is that uh, was that something that you can take us through? Yeah, yeah, of course. So I've got um, I've got the trail rock shoe here yes. as well. I think. Yeah. So in that exploded view, um, you can see that all the components that the shoe is made out of. So on the bottom, because we always start at the bottom for the grip, um, you can see the outsole first. And then after that, um, you can see the midsole. And then there is a rock plate, which basically gives protection. Um, sorry, I think the rock plate's probably... There's yeah, rock plate there. Yeah. Rock, yeah. yeah, there is. Because um, I can't see that picture, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'll just um, put the picture so up again. The, again. There you've got the rock plate. Um, and uh, that gives you protection from rocks because a trail rock is a shoe where you bet be using it on, on rocky terrain. Um, and then you got insole and then you can see the upper. So that's 
something that a lot of people don't don't know how many of these components are actually in a shoe. Uh, have you got any questions about it or not? Um, yes, um, yeah, because one of my patrons, um, well, Guy Greatrex, the patron who suggested that we do this, he actually chopped up his shoe. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a picture up for everybody watching there. Um, so I sent this to you guys earlier so that you could see it. But he chopped all the way through it. Um, and he was looking for a rock plate um, and he couldn't find one. But um, so, yeah, can you just explain to him about rock plates and not rock plates? <laughs> okay, so sometimes it's quite hard to find a rock plate. I've actually um, I, I know which shoe he's cut up. There is a rock plate in there. You you need to find it just above the midsole. So I've got cut up shoe here as well. Um, so that's the midsole there, the yellow bit. That bit here is what we call the strobel, mm -hmm. and it's in between the midsole and the strobel. But there's quite a lot of glue there as well. So you'd have to really peel off that white white bit there. And then you can find a rock plate. So it's that grey bit between the white bit and the yellow bit then? Exactly. That's ah. what it is. Ah. Yeah. And so all of my rock plates, I've got one here actually. Okay, yeah. Oh wow, that looks like a skeleton. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So this is a bit of the Innovate DNA because we want to give protection, but we still want it to be flexible. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to make a very stiff approach like shoe. Um, we want it to, for, the, for the foot to still be able to move. But then we also don't want you to hurt whilst like the stones are like poking through your feet. Um, so we've got these rock plates, which actually are like independent, like your metatarsals, your foot bones, mm -hmm. which might look like a skeleton because it's supposed to mimic the skeleton of your foot. Ah, and so... You want it in a rock light, I think. Yeah, it looks really light as well. It looks only oh, like 20 right. grams or 10 grams even. I think it's about 10 grams, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. And that just gives you protect a bit more protection from rocks and roots and things. Yeah, so in different shoes are different rock plates. So rock light, for example, is, I think that's a shoe that, um, Guy. that was in the photo. Yeah. Um, that one is our um, most versatile shoe, so it gives a medium amount of protection. In the trail rock, there's a bigger rock plate uh, where these ones are attached a bit more, so it's a little bit less flexible, but it's more protective. So we have different levels of protection depending on what the shoe is intended to be used for. Ah, and there's a little hole, a little round hole in the heel. Is that just so you can hang it somewhere, or is yeah, that? That's just yeah, okay. <laughs> ring. That's not normally there, yeah. just because it's in a, on a component ring for the salespeople to take. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is really fascinating, guys. And everyone on the live chat is agreeing. Okay, I'm just going to, we've got um, loads of people watching. We've got nearly 50 people watching live, which is fantastic. I'm just going to read out some comments. And then I want to talk about graphene grip because um, we've got a, a patron question about that. Um, so I'm just going to read out some nice comments so that you can feel appreciated. Um, <laughs> and so... Um, okay, so we've got Conrad Anderson. He says, um, hello from Michigan. Um, he's watching from the treadmill. Good work, Conrad. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> uh, we've got Nigel Barnett saying hi all. Um, Helen B is here as well. She says uh, she made the 6.30 tonight. Looking forward to the show. Um, Jeff Griffiths um, says, wow, specialised or what? So he must have been referring to one of those photos that we mm. put up. Um, and... Um, uh, Biker Bob says evening all and uh, Jeff Griffiths has said again love everything innovate um, and uh, Guy Greatrex says he's definitely a fanboy for innovate um, oh we've got somebody who might be related to you Bo it's Yoop um, Outsorn he <laughs> says is 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 that some a relation of yours um it's brother, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it says amazing brand keep it up you guys and girls <laughs> so um yeah thank you you for watching that's good support there giving to the family um jammy the jam says starting up trail running so this will be interesting as i've heard a lot from the brand um kev jh says uh, my missus calls me an innovate fanboy um <laughs> James Frost says, I've never tried anything made by Innovate. Perhaps someday I should try some shoes. Well, I, probably uh, Bo and Lee are going to say yes to that. Um, and Jeff's put him right. You won't be disappointed with Innovate. Um, Kev says, we need some graphene grip running poles. Mm. Um, new invention for you there. A bit of an idea. 
Um, and then there's some more questions. There's some questions about padding and wide feet, obviously, but we'll get onto that later. Um, Alex DeHoto says eight, size 8.5, the test size, that's his size. So um, he'll be uh, emailing you shortly, I'm sure. And Chrissy TV says that's also her size. So both of them, there you go, <laughs> two new testers. <laughs> um, we've got um, listeners from Serbia as well. Wow. Um, and um, loads of people, yep, uh, Nigel saying he's got a size eight and a half too. Um, yep, uh, yes. It's that like, is yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've got some really great comments on the live chat. Keep your comments coming, everybody. I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. But I'm going to give priority to the patron questions, obviously. Um, and the first one is about graphene grip. So um, Guy Greater X says, can you expand on graphene, please? Um, I heard the other day that graphene is just sprayed onto the outsole rubber. Is this so? Or can you explain how it's in the rubber? Um, can you get them to explain this, please? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's not sprayed on. <laughs> Didn't think it <laughs> so was. <laughs> graphene is actually a really, really thin layer, just a one molecule layer of graphite. Um, and graphite is the same thing that you find in pencils. So that's actually quite common, but making it into one layer molecule, molecule is very hard and then it becomes quite unstable. So we need to make sure that once we've split it into one layer molecule, we mix it into the rubber straight away. Um, so it's mixed into the rubber, dispersed into there. Um, it does mean that at the moment we can't really make our outsoles anything but black, but we're trying to work on it because of the way we, we put the graphene in. Um, but that also means that you can just quite easily recognize if there's graphene in the outsole. Well, if it's a color, definitely not. Yes. <laughs> so it's quite a good tip. Um, I can't really tell you how we do it because that's a bit of a, straight, um, a, a trade secret, but it's definitely mixed into the rubber um, Yeah, when we make the rubber. Ah, and, and why, why do you do that? And, like, and how did you even find out that you could do that? Um, so graphene, I think we're, it's like very strong, strong properties were um, discovered after people managed to make it in 2010 at the yeah, University of Manchester. Two researchers um, found a way to make that one layer uh, graphene molecule. And um, it was actually um, some of the people who worked here at Innovate who found out that um, these really strong prop uh, like strengthening properties of uh, graphene would be very useful for our rubber because rubber used to always have this trade-off and climbers would know about this as well. A really soft rubber gives you great sticky grip on rock, um, but it also wears down really quickly and then you have to replace your shoes very often. So you could either get durability or you could get grip. But now if you could take this really soft rubber and you add graphene to it, then it makes it more durable, but you could still get that super stickiness. So it basically just means that you get to have the best of both worlds and you don't have to have a trade-off anymore. Um, and then I think it was, Lee was probably a bit better at this, it was about 18 months from mm -hmm. when we uh, found out that this was gonna this was gonna be a great project and we would work with the University of Manchester to help us identify the best way to get the graphene into the rubber till actually having our Terra Ultra with graphene on the market. Yeah, we, we worked really quickly. 18 months is really, really short length of time to go from, you know, first design concept through to getting the shoes on, on retail shelves. Um, but I think that's because we're quite a, because we're quite a small company. We are, you know, we're quite fast and agile in what we do. I think if it had been a bigger brand, there would have been a lot of red tape involved. It would have been difficult to, to do that. So we're really, you know, quite fortunate the type of brand that we are we had a great relationship with the University of Manchester and the scientists there. When you go there to the National Graphene Institute, it just it totally blows you away. It's when I first time I went, I was like, "Wow, we're, we're we're really at the cutting edge of science here." You know, it was it was blew my mind really. And um, you know, graphene is the future. I mean, you're going to say that we would say that, but it is true. Um, you know, this is a technology that is already being used in um, aeroplanes. Um, sports cars which are quite low key at the moment once 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 graphene explodes in the next 10 years everyone's going to know what it is and we're going to be in a really fortunate position and having already been there we'll already be in the market so 
yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's definitely very exciting. And thanks for explaining it further as well, because, um, yeah, it's definitely not sprayed on. It's not like a painting of a car. <laughs> uh, it would also rub off quite quickly, wouldn't it? Mm. Whilst now it's just interspersed with the whole rubber, so mm. you can't just rub it off. It's worth mentioning as well that graphene is, it is the strongest material in the world. Um, and it was actually, it comes from graphite, bro, um, so then it comes from graphite rock. And graphite, graphite rock was first actually, it was first mined in the Lake District yeah. in 55. And obviously our office is in the Lake District. And I went out and I went and found the mine where mm. the original graphite mine. So I know exactly mm. where it is. Wow. And I've taken people there for tours and things like that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> like that. But um, yeah, so it's all really nice. It's all really well linked up and it's a really nice story. Yeah, that's a really nice little um, link up there. And you mentioned that it's the hardest material in the world. I thought diamonds were the hardest thing in the world. Um, but maybe Stop. mixing Stop. diamonds with your outsole would be a bit more expensive. <laughs> just a, just a touch. It'd be very slippery. Yeah. Oh, don't tell you anyone. You could do... You want soft, actually. Yeah. Oh, it would be it's soft. Soft but strong. Yeah. So it's like elasticated, but it's like pulling an elastic band, but then it always coming back to its original shape, mm. rather than what a diamond is. You couldn't even pull it, would you? It would you always stay in the same shape. And that's not what we want. We want it to nicely deform and grip to that rock, but then we don't want it to wear down quite quickly. We want all of that rubber to stay in the same shape and just go come back to its original shape the whole time. Yeah, okay, so no diamonds in shoes then, oh, we're safe. <laughs> <laughs> shoes are expensive it's enough these days. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe you could do that as an April Fool. <laughs> so, good idea, spread it down. <laughs> yeah, I know, you did an April Fool one year, which I thought was brilliant, where you said there was retractable spikes, like ice spikes, in yeah. a mud claw or something like that. And I thought that was a brilliant idea, and then it was an April Fool. <laughs> I've actually entertained that idea quite mm. seriously. I know, I quite yes. like it. But it's hard. <laughs> I would love it. It's really heavy. That's the main reason. Uh, yeah, a bit like Wolverine, isn't it? Just like yeah. shooting out there. Okay, so it's time for the next question, which actually is many questions. Um, so um, it's uh, from Guy Greatrex again, because um, he was the person who inspired this. So I must definitely ask all of his questions and then I'll go on to the other ones. Um, he said, first of all, I would love to say what a huge fan I am of the brand. Yay. Um, uh, oh, he has lots of questions here. Uh, let's start with, uh, do you think you've gone as far as you can with the graphene grip? Or is there even better grip out there? Steady on, guy. <laughs> See. Mm. <laughs> um, I know that we're still developing the graphene grip further. Like, we don't want to stand still. We don't want to be like, you know, this is it. Like, we have got the best grip on the market now, but we need to always keep evolving. So um, in order to get to the graphene grip that is on the market now, we've done loads and loads of batch testing and developing and testing at Manchester University and, find, and sending back again. Um, but we're still doing that now and we keep on uh, developing further so that we can stay ahead of the curve even in the future. So yeah, we'll we'll still improve, don't worry. Yeah, so improving graphene and whatever comes along next, like, you know, you never know when diamonds are going to make a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and, um, so then um, Guy talks about carbon plates. Um, do you think carbon plates will make it into trail shoes? Um, and if so, will you look at doing a carbon plate shoe? So is, I think, is that what's in those new Nike shoes that everybody's going mad for at the moment and saying, oh, it's illegal? Um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, do you see a place for that kind of thing in trail shoes? Well, I think like it's really interesting um, what Nike has done there recently. And I think I've been reading a lot about it and listening to podcasts. And what they've done is like fine tuned that carbon plate to run on the road with a runner of a specific weight as well. Because there's really lots of interaction effects to get like this high energy return to make a really efficient runner like it's done. I think if you translate that to trail, you'd have to redesign the plates because the, the trail is... Um, softer and also the trail is very variable so you wouldn't necessarily get the same response every single time and when I was talking to you earlier about you know the flexibility of the shoe the carbon plates would mean that you would get a very stiff and rigid shoe and you're also quite high off the ground which makes that you're very unstable so if you find a little rock um, on your run 
you would go over your ankle quite quickly. So I think the way that those shoes are designed are not very suitable to trail running at the moment, especially not if you want to have a, a an injury-free, comfortable um, run. But it doesn't mean that you can make a plate that maybe is allowing more flexibility or maybe have a wider base so you get more stability. So I'm not saying it won't get there, but I don't think it will get there in the same way, in the same way, shape and form that is in road running because it's just such a different way of running. This is just my sort of like biomechanics observation of it, not necessarily like what we're doing in the brand that's really interesting so if you were to take a pair of those Nike shoes and try to use them on trails it might not be the best idea then maybe I wonder if anyone's tried it I don't think you would get the same benefit Mm -hmm. as you would get on road not at all and yeah I think are you, you, you going to go and run in <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> I could I could ask them to send me a pair and see if it makes me as fast as Kipchoge. <laughs> yeah. When you're running on the road as well, obviously in the in these shoes, you, you you've been propelled forward forward in them. And when you're on the road, you you run the same gait all the time. Whereas when you run off road, as we all know, you know the terrain is very varied. So you're you know you can be you can slightly be falling to the right or to the left, and you know your knees aren't always in the same forward direction. I, I don't think it'd be a good idea to be getting propelled forward on the trail too much, especially if, you know because you you're not in that same that same gait that same rhythm as you are on the road. So yeah, I'm not I'm not sure it would work. Um, we we are looking at I think it's safe to say that we are looking at midsole developments as well. Um, but it's not carbon plates, but you know we're innovate and we're innovative. So yeah, <laughs> watch this space. There might be some there might be some stuff coming further down the line on that. I see what you did there with the innovative. That's very good. <laughs> well, we will set. <laughs> well, we will certainly be looking um, looking out for um, everything, um, all future developments. Um, so there's a couple of questions now about. Um, we will come back to the wide fit and the cushioning um, in just a mo, where we'll cover barefoot running and that kind of thing. Um, but I just wanted to just finish off guys' questions here. Um, and another question about a different uh, sport as well. Um, Guy wants to know um, why Innovate decided to go into the CrossFit business. Yeah, um, I've got actually got a shoe to show you for this. So this is a this is what you would now call a CrossFit shoe. So originally, back in about 2005, uh, Innovate designed a shoe very very similar to this for uh, mountain running in the Alps. So the idea was the runners there who were doing these shots of these less than 10k races in the mountains, they wanted to run as fast as they could up and down these hills. They wanted something amazingly lightweight um, but really grippy on the bottom. They didn't need an aggressive grip, more of a, of a, of a flat grip. So we designed this shoe for that. Um, and we're quite honest and we say it didn't work. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't take off um, with the mountain runners. They just For some reason, they just didn't go for it, even though we'd done all the work and all the feedback on it. And we were all about uh, killing the shoe effectively. It was like, well, this isn't going to work for us. And then over in the west coast of America, suddenly, suddenly from out of nowhere, they started selling these shoes. And it progressed quickly and um, started getting phone calls to Innovate HQ asking, you know, people wanting these shoes in America. So we had to do some investigation and looking into it. And it was actually the start of the CrossFit movement was just starting. And for those who don't know what CrossFit is, it's a bit like um, it's gym work. We call it like hardcore gym work. Uh, rope climbing, box jumps, uh, weightlifting, and um, but doing them all together in one workout. Um, and these CrossFitters had just discovered this shoe that was a mountain running shoe, and they found it perfect for the sport that they were doing. As, as word of mouth spread, more and more people wanted this shoe, and we were absolutely undated. We couldn't get the shoes over there fast enough onto people's feet. Um, so we were the original brand in CrossFit. The first brand to be in CrossFit was Innovate. Um, and how many years later now, what, 15 years later, we're still in CrossFit and um, still doing really well. Um, it's a lot more difficult now because Nike and Reebok and Under Armour and these huge, huge brands are all playing in the same space. But, you know, Innovate's the original guys in there. And, you know, and we, we actually make and design shoes for CrossFit yeah. now. We don't just design shoes for mountain running. <laughs> yeah, is, so, so that the, shoe, the F-Lite shoe, I think, that Bodil showed you earlier on, this one. That one, that's a CrossFit specific shoe. Um, it's just launched this year and is selling incredibly well for us. So, yeah. Brilliant. 
That's great. What a happy accident that was then. So that's interesting. It's interesting that you didn't go, oh, CrossFit's big. Let's try and, you know, make something out of that market. It's like, oh, we're trying to do our thing. Oh, it, it's working for CrossFitters. And then, oh, brilliant. Let's go for CrossFit then. Um, that's a really nice way around to do it, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They, they, they found us. We didn't We didn't go looking for them. And, you know, it's the same. It was the same in obstacle course racing, you know, because of the fantastic grip of the shoes. You know, these guys found something that worked for them. Um, and then they came, they came to us and started buying the product. So, yeah, it's, it's great when things like that happen. Yeah, that's really, really awesome. Um, and just, just talking of these different sports to trail running and mountain running here, um, Alex Dehoto asks, um, have you considered making cycling kit at all? Because he says his Innovate windshell was pretty useful on the bike this winter, um, albeit a bit flappy, he says. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess it's not. It's not designed for cycling. But I, I wear mine for cycling as well. And I, I know what he's saying. Um, I guess the cut of the jacket is a little wider than it would be on a cycling jacket, which are you know very narrow to the body. Um, but you know, I think it does a, a decent job for that. I mean, the cycling market is very different to the running market. Um, it's it would be a big step away from what we usually do. Um, so there's no there's no intentions to go into cycling. Um, we're quite happy in running, hiking, fast hikes are a huge market for us now, um, and CrossFit of course, obstacle course racing and swim run. Um, so yeah, it's funny though because we do get a lot of emails from people who use our products for sports that we'd never even thought about. Um, I've had, in my time here, I've had lacrosse players, uh, hockey, hockey, hockey issues are really popular for that. Oh, wow. And uh, the best one is a new sport called speed golf. Oh, wow. Golf. <laughs> You run, but you have to run around the golf course as fast as you can while playing your shots. Um, and apparently our shoes are absolutely perfect for it because of the grip, because they're lightweight, and because you can run really quick in them. So, um, yeah, we're getting lots of emails from speed golfers at the moment. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, well, this is excellent. That's really good news. I'm glad to hear that Innovate's doing really, really well as well. Um, so uh, just before we come on to the wide fit and cushioning questions, because there's a lot of these on the live chat as well, actually, I just want to ask you one more question. Um, it, you might have answered this in a small way earlier, but just on the live chat up to the summit says, um, where does the inspiration from the shoe construction come from? Um, like, for example, does it, I know you said um, earlier, Bo, that you, um, you talk to a lot of different runners, but do you ever get inspiration from the animal kingdom um, or like other sports like Formula One and kind of stuff like that? Um, I think like for the upper, less so from animal kingdom, from the, for the outsole when we need to have the grip, definitely. Even our shoes are often named after it. Mm. So we have the, the cross talon and we used to, we have the trail, um, so the cross talon. So the talon is uh, referencing the claw of a, a bird, obviously. Um, we've got we used to have the cross claw. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we do we do take a lot of inspiration from uh, the animal kingdom there. For the upper, I mean, Luke takes his inspiration. Luke and Graham take their inspiration from everywhere. Um, they look at um, very. They they look at streetwear. They look at. Um, Lots of sort of like inspiring structures, even buildings, mm. like how to structurally build something um, in a new and unique way. So from um, architecture, I've seen them put the craziest things up um, in their design reviews, to be honest. <laughs> so um, I think actually the further away you take the inspiration from, the more unique and innovative the concept can be. Yeah. And so it kind of depends on which project, really, like where we take our inspiration from. And also, we don't always have to think of a new way to do something. Sometimes, you know what, like the newest thing is this innovation, and the rest is just going to be the thing that we know that works. So we try and, like, you know, not put all of these new concepts into one shoe. We just want to have this one thing that we really believe in, that we've really well tested, and that's our innovation. The rest is just going to be you know, tried and tested, comfortable fit, no water absorption, that's really important in our shoes. Um, because if the absorb if the materials absorb a lot of water, then you're gonna have heavy shoes and we're trying to make lightweight shoes. Um, and durability, always durable. And if it's gonna compromise any of these things, then I mean it could be a cool design, but it's not gonna come past me. 
<laughs> and two right. <laughs> That's a brilliant answer. Thank you. And you just touched upon the waterproof there. So this is a good opportunity to, to ask, ask Chrissy TV's question from the live chat. Um, she says, this waterproof thing, hmm, mm. emoji face. How come there are so many non-waterproof ones on the market? So can you just explain why trail runners would possibly prefer, most of them prefer a, a, water, a, a non-waterproof shoe? Yeah, so we do have some waterproof uh, trail running shoes. Um, and it just depends on where and how you're going to use your shoe. So what I said just now is like not absorbing water too much because a lot of people... Uh, they'll be running in what I call certain wet conditions. So they're definitely going to get wet feet because you could make the whole shoe, let's get a shoe, you could make the whole shoe waterproof, but there's always a big hole in the top. <laughs> so if it's going to go above that, the waterline going to go above it, then you're definitely going to get wet feet, even though the whole shoe is waterproof. The problem with waterproofing is it's not, since once the water is in, it's not going to come out anymore. So some of the testing I do is, not how much water is going to come in, like a, it's definitely going to come in, but how quickly does the water actually come out again? So um, I do that by weighing the shoes before and after and stuff, but that's uh, maybe too um, geeky. For, uh, for <laughs> no, no, it's, it's really cool. But, uh, nice to yeah, know so how you do I it. test our water absorption, like basically depending on how quickly the water actually exits the shoe again. So lots of runners would say, oh, I'm crossing streams, I'm definitely going to get wet feet, so therefore I'm just going to get a shoe which um, is not waterproof, but um, it doesn't hold a lot of water once I've gotten wet feet anyways. It's not very comfortable with this weather, is it? It's cold. Yeah, we yeah, and um, I've actually run in Innovate shoes and other shoes as well, and got completely wet feet, gone through rivers, whatever, whatever. And then it's been a nice sunny summer's day, and I've been running on kind of drier tops of fells, and my feet have actually pretty much dried out, apart from sweat yeah. after that, because the shoes drained. So, yeah. so yeah, that would be why you don't want a waterproof shoe, because it just stays waterlogged. Um, yeah. And um, but having said that, um, as a journalist, I do quite like a waterproof shoe because often you're kind of you're kind of running a little bit and then stopping and hanging around lots in kind of grassy pasture type areas, and it's actually really handy to have a waterproof shoe for for yeah. that that kind of job. Um, and so I know quite a lot of runners who might be running the same route mm. quite often, and they know they don't have to cross a stream. They don't they're not going to go for a bog. Um, but they will hit a couple of puddles and it be, might be actually raining outside and then you could just keep your feet dry. So therefore we do have some of our um, run, trail running shoes in a Gore-Tex version um, and then you can basically choose whether or not you want uh, waterproofing or not. Yeah, and what are the waterproofing um, or using a waterproof sock, um, but the waterproof uh, shoe is also quite handy in the snow if it's good conditions um, mm -hmm. or the wind because it stops the wind as well as the water. That's, well, that's just yeah. what I found over the years. Um, but yeah, um, uh, basically if you're only going to buy one shoe, it's probably going to be not waterproof. Um, Fab. Okay, so now we can finally come on to um, some questions about the wide wideness of the fit and also the cushioning because we've got even on the live chat I've I've got quite loads of questions about this. I've got um uh there we go. Okay, so Arlene M says, will they consider making a shoe that is a little wider and highly cushioned for us older runners? And we've got um uh then we've got Randy Caffaro on the live chat who says um, trail runners have um, trail ultras have a lot of runners that are 40 years old our knees are not what they used to be which is why us older runners run in more cushioned shoes will innovate make a higher cushioned shoe um, so I suppose let's start with the cushioning one there and I suppose to to sort of understand that it's quite interesting to consider um sorry for all these questions but um Graham Guy's question which is um why why was the barefoot design all the rage some years ago like is it better to run barefoot he's read Born to Run um the book by Chris McDougall there um but yeah, I know Innovate started with this idea of natural movement and less is more when it comes to shoes and running, but people are now asking for more cushioning because they're getting older. So how does that sit with the brand and, and how your footwear will develop? So I think like 
we don't we're not like a barefoot running shoe brand what we are all about is but providing the best grip and then after that why well, I said in the in the briefing stage we then try and find the right cushioning for the right activity and um, so we have especially in our trail running sh- range we got quite a few shoes with um, with more cushioning in it and um, maybe people might not know about it that much but for example in the trail talon we offer two trail talons a 235 and a 290 uh, the 290, I've just shown that to you earlier, um, is the one with an 8 mil drop and more cushioning. So it's got two two layers of cushioning here, like a soft top layer and a slightly harder under layer. So that you get the combination of comfort and like good energy return. And then the 235 has like um, basically only this bottom layer. And then you get like a, a more flexible, more lightweight, less cushioned shoe. So we do actually do quite a lot of different cushioning levels in our shoes. If you want something more grippy, like more like a fell shoe, then the Cross Talent Ultra that I had cut up earlier um, is a good option because that's got more cushioning than most of our other fell shoes. So even though this is supposed to be used in soft and muddy conditions where you'd say, oh, the ground is already soft, we thought, well, but you're always running a little bit on the trail as well. and Maybe people do want a shoe which is more cushioned and wider because this is a very wide fit um, for like this longer distance. So we actually, that's why our range is so wide and I think for a lot of people probably quite complex is because we try and tailor to every need of every runner. Um, so yeah, we still make shoes which are um, very light and flexible and probably more towards the like natural running side, but we also make shoes which have more protection and more cushioning for the longer days and people just wanting a bit more comfort. So we try and tailor to both markets, but our main focus is always the best grip. I mean, Bo's Bo's heavily specialised in biomechanics, and you know she she's talked to me about this at, at length. And you know the 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 we we've always talked about the foot controlling the shoe and not the shoe controlling the foot. So in some brands where you've got these huge huge stack heights of of, of shoes, you're getting no natural feel. Your foot's not. The shoe's completely controlled in the foot, and that's not good for you in the long term. And Bo can talk more about the biomechanics of a foot and explain that a little bit. You're better than me at it. Yeah. Do you wanna? Do you wanna hear more? About yeah, that? yeah. Because like, if you're 40 and your knees are going, should should you not then just go? Oh, I'll just get a padded shoe and that'll sort it out. Is that what? Is that maybe not the right idea? I think everyone's different, and there is no one right answer for everyone. When you read about most of this research is uh, wearing more cushioned shoes or less cushioned shoes, it could go one or two ways. Some people get more injured, some people get less injured. The best predictor whether or not you get injured is actually comfort. So if you get into a shoe store and you're going to try and find a good uh, shoe, whether or not it's comfortable in the first five minutes is actually the best predictor of whether or not the shoe is going to give you an injury. So don't ever buy an uncomfortable shoe. <laughs> That's basically the answer there. Um, so the, the way the foot moves is all optimized for us to, like, for the whole body to work. I think like a lot of running brands, they've always tried to control the foot. So the, the Nike shoe with all the carbon plates is definitely controlling the foot there, but it's also used by very elitist runners who are probably super strong and won't uh, deal with us mere mortals who have injuries <laughs> <laughs> but um so our shoes always allow your foot to 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 move naturally so if you're at a trail running you're, if, the, if i can say that my hand is my foot you can might, might have like a rock underneath your foot and if your foot can adjust for that you can actually just keep on going because so if you have a stiff plate you're going to rock over and that means you might have your ankle rolling or that um, that force is going up through your knees and that's causing knee problems or even going up to your hips. So there is a lot to say about, you know, making local adaptations in your foot and letting all these, I think there's 36 bones in the, the 26 bones in the foot and 35 joints in between all those bones. And they're all very functional. They're supposed to be moving and, and helping you adapt to the terrain. And that's what our shoes still allow you to do, which is why we do the flexible rock plates and making sure that we don't lose that natural movement of the foot. But it's not in contrast with cushioning. I mean, you could still have quite a lot of like nice soft cushioning underneath your foot without, and then it's still being able to move naturally, as long as you don't make the shoe super stiff. 
So if people are looking for a cushioned innovate shoe, they should, um, are you still using the arrows on the back of the heel to show how cushioned it is? Um, do you just want to show um, maybe the uh, that last shoe that you had? Um, it was like a, a greeny, yellowy shoe. Um, does it have like arrows on the back, just so people know? Yeah. So, so the arrows are actually the drop. So that's the heel. Oh, to okay. So it's not drop. cushioning level. Not necessarily. No. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, the website is just a really good source of information because you can always see how many millimeters of cushioning you have here. Mm -hmm. It's all there. We're always very, very open about these things. So we have quite a few different shoes. So we have, for example, the Terra Ultra, which I think you probably ran in as well. It's a zero drop shoe, but it's got quite a lot of cushioning. And this one is an eight millimeter drop shoe. It's probably um, quite accessible for most people, an eight millimeter think, drop, and it's got quite a lot of cushioning. I think, if, I think if there's trail runners out there looking, wanting to get into Innovate or uh, you know, keenly interested in the brand and then looking for a more cushioned version of an Innovate shoe, I think the two that I would recommend them to look at would be the Trail Talon 290 and the Park Claw 275. They're probably, am I right in thinking that? Probably yeah. our two most cushioned trail running shoes. So that would be a good place to Yeah, to start. and if you want a fell running shoe, which means like deeper lugs, be better for the current wet, muddy conditions outside, like winter, I would go for that Cross Talon Ultra 260. Because yeah. that's like a cushioned but deep lug kind of grippy shoe. Mm -hmm. What's the other two that... Lee just said are more for trail use, so they have shallower lugs, um, so they're a bit more like passing trails rather than muddy, grassy slopes. Brilliant. That's really good advice. Thank you for those um, shoe recommendations as well. That's so helpful for everyone. So, and if it's got ultra on it, it's probably going to be a bit more cushioned, isn't it, for, for the long yeah. distance? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to the, wi the wider fit um, conversation as well? Yes. Yeah, I and just want to come on to that now. Yeah, I, have you got the um, website there with yeah. you? So yeah, so I've got, the, which one do you want first? There's the shoe selector and there's the shoe fit widener scale. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, I think it's, it's probably, you know, it might be a fault on our part that we've not really educated people, you know, in this really before and not done a, perhaps not even done a good enough job of it. We have, we have a fit scale, um, which is a one to five. Um, and this relates to the width that's in the... That's in the toe box, so that across there, that part of the shoe. Um, so one to five, one being the most precise, narrower fit, and five being the widest room that you have in the toe box. Um, and all our shoes on the website have have, they have a number next to them, which will be between one and five. And um, you can search on the when you go to the trail running page and search the shoes. You can click one, two, three, four, and five, and it'll bring up which shoes fall into which categories. And um, so, um, yeah, and it's, it's 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 probably more simple than people think. We do do wide fitting shoes across trail running, across fell running, across all the sports we do. Um, they are there. Um, it's just maybe the, you see more often than not um, more precision fit shoes on some of the top runners because they prefer that. Um, but yeah, we, we, we do all widths of shoes. The other thing to bear in mind is that it is referring to that toe box area. All our shoes, we have really good, um, um, we call lockdown in the midfoot and in the heel area to hold you nice and secure. It's in that toe box area where the, where the width difference is. Yes, that's really important, isn't it? Because um, um, we've had a lot of people talk about this. Um, so maybe they're still not wide enough even at number five um so <laughs> that's also something to yeah. to maybe think about um because yeah. we had that's the that's the cushioning and the wideness is the the biggest thing for people but it, it seems like you are doing shoes which are a wide and b cushioned so maybe it's when people are going into shops or maybe it's when people are looking for the shoe online. So maybe there's sort of um, a web page you could do um, on shoe, best shoes for wide foot feet and or a blog post like best shoes, best innovate shoes for wide feet and best innovate shoes for um, cushioned feet and get, me get the more. info. Yeah. I'm writing it down now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you giving me more work to do? No, I'm giving Lee some more work to do. Because all he does is follow people around mountains handing out jelly babies from all I can see. <laughs> um, so there we go. There are wide fit shoes. There are cushioned shoes. Um, 
Um, and so we're running out of time now. So in the last five minutes, we need to cover where is the brand going in five years time? And I've got a couple of people that want to know about um, why, why weren't you at the National Running Show this year? So that could be one of the things you do in five years' time. It's Rich Simpson. He says, I think he was quite upset that you weren't there, actually. He said, what were they thinking by not attending the National Running Show in Birmingham? <laughs> Any plans for the future with that? Uh, but yeah, I mean, possibly. It's something we looked at we looked at this year. Um, it's you know it's difficult decision sometimes to to decide where to go. And um, there's so many so many options and so many places where we're asked to go. And um, so we have to make tough decisions. Um, but it is something that's on our radar. And um, we've talked to the guys there. So yeah, it also possibly. coincided with Ispo, and I was there. Oh. Oh, was there. We did we did however have Nikki Spinks there, one of our ambassadors, um, um, an ultra runner and fell runner who I who was on the ultra stage with. Um, Lars from Barclay Marathons, and I've seen some pictures and look like I mean, look like there was thousands of people there watching. Um, so you know, and, and Nikki's obviously represented the brand very well there. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's something that we'll look at again, and, and and you never know, we might we might be there one year. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, well we'll we'll watch out for you there next year. Um, if not, everyone will go to Ispo. <laughs> I suppose a trade show you can't go there everyone um okay so oh and then another thing for you to think about in where you see the brand in five years time is from kev jh he wants to know um do you think that as a company you would consider a resoling program like vibram do so this is when uppers are fine but the sole has just maybe worn down I, but I, I think with graphene grip you're not going to get that are you the uppers are going to go before the soles potentially so you might have to do a re-uppering program what do you think about things like that like i know innovate's really eco-friendly as a company um yeah what do you think of ideas like that so i mean i think they're very good ideas but they're only like sort of helping the in-between stage we just want to make a shoe which lasts longer for people in the first place um, because as soon as you start like replacing the parts, you'd also have to make the shoe more part replaceable, which then means probably less durable because you're not stitching it down or gluing it down as well. And or are you making it more heavy because you're making all these extra seams and then less comfortable. So I think like at the moment, we're just really trying to focus on making our shoes as durable as possible. Um, I don't know if uh, Lee has other plans for the future because I just sometimes a little bit tunnel vision into just a product <laughs> rather than the wider company vision here. I, 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 I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's a big thing, part of the graphene grip really. You know, we're making shoes that will last longer. So effectively we're sending less shoes to landfill. Um, so, you know, we're, we're doing our bit that way. Um, and as a brand, I think you mentioned it there, we are trying to be as eco-friendly as possible in terms of our sustainability. We're, we're really key on that at the moment. We, uh, yeah, I know it, these things might sound quite small scale, but even the people who work here at Innovate, we're a small team. But you know, we're all trying to do our bit as well. Um, we we did have a habit for quite a long time. We've got a really nice cafe, which is close to the office, and people would go and buy um, cups of tea, cups of coffee, and we would be using the paper cups that would come from there. Well, we've now all got. Can you see those? We've all got these really cool keep cups. Cool. Uh, got its lid on at the moment, but yeah. Just like, just like that. So we've all got these. There's no need for it. So we banned paper cups from the office. No one needs to bring them. any visitors or guests that come in. We'll give them a keep cup. Um, and it's just you know little things like that. I mean, you were telling me Bob, about cutting down on uh, uh, visits to visits, visits to our factories in yeah. Asia. Just things like that because that's carbon emissions on the plane. So I mean, we can't be perfect, but we can definitely try and you know make our impact everywhere as minimal as possible. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's really good. And it's just really nice when you get people in the company really care um, and um, you're all trying to do your bit and the company's trying to do their bit as well. And, and you can see that from Innovate, um, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so I've asked you that one and that one. And then, um, yeah, so 
prolonging shoes is where you see the brand going in five years time and um uh, <laughs> have have you got any jobs going because <laughs> lots of people <laughs> on live chat are saying they're size 8.5 uh, shoe size for testing. I'm sure you've got tons of testers already. Um, I think it's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek question, but is there any way that people can get involved or do you have any job opportunities coming up um, for Innovate in the future? Yeah, we do. We're, we're you know, as a, as a brand, as a company, we're growing all the time and, you know, we are we are in, taking on people, you know, there is job opportunities come up. The best place to look is on the Innovate website, innovate.com. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a link to, I think, it's, I think it says careers. Um, and jobs are posted in there. I know from doing a social media post about this last month, we were looking for four new recruits. Um, that was in Isn't January it? time. It's a variety of posts. So, you know, we are a brand who are looking to employ, to grow further. You know, we're looking for, certain, you know, knowledge sets that we haven't already got here as well. Um, so it's not a bad place. We're, we're based in Staveley in the Lake District, mm -hmm. uh, right in the heart of the fells. We love lunchtime runs. They are uh, the best. <laughs> you know, we're, 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 pro we're all product testers. We all live and breathe the brand. Anyone who comes here is, you know, blown away by just seeing, you know, how, like I said, we, we are we are the brand. You know, we, we all live and breathe it. And, um, yeah, it's a great place to work. So check out the website um, and keep your eyes peeled for future opportunities. Fantastic. And we've got a lot of people now want to keep cup as well and innovate keep cup. Uh, do you, do you sell them as well on the website? No, not at the moment. This is the first time we've done it was, um, the start of this year and we brought them in um, to the office and they've been super popular. We're, um, we're not selling them at the moment, but, you know, if I mean, if the demand's there, you, you, you never know. We, we may look at that. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. We'll keep an eye on that. If, we, if we're seeing a lot of interest, then it might be something we can look at, look at uh, going into production with. Brilliant. Well, I know um, you already make the little race um, cup that you can use. That's um, right. so, so, yeah, um, uh, one for the office as well would be great. Okay, so um, one final question. Um, so, I'm sure after, watch after watching or listening to this, people are going to be really keen to, if they've not already tried Innovate Shoes or they've only tried a few, um, are you guys at any events or anything throughout the year where people can have a go and, and try lots of different shoes, like more cushioned ones, maybe more wide fit ones? um yeah where where can people find you yeah um we are well i mean obviously i mean the first place to say is that we're in most running retailers that you'll you know find um we have us on our website again if you go to innovate.com and you go to the bottom we and you click on the retailers link we have um a search engine there where you can search out you just put in your postcode and it tells you the nearest retailer who stocks innovate so we would always advise people to go and, I think Bordeaux touched on it, everyone's feet are different. Every, what everyone wants from a running shoe is, is different as well. So, you know, go to the shops, go and try these shoes on, go and see what fits, what, what feels best, and talk to the experts there. And then after that, I guess, is, yeah, if you want an opportunity to, to come and see us, we're probably the biggest series that we're part of, and I know it's Lake District based, but is um, Lakeland Trails. Um, series which has nine events through the year. I know these are super popular from people all over the UK who come from afar to take part in them. Um, we're at every one of those events. Um, we'll be at UTMB um, in Chamonix um, in August this year um, and, so, and there will be other events as well that come up along, along the way. Brilliant. So there's lots of opportunities to try your shoes out then. Um, oh, that's fantastic. Well, um, I just want to say a big thank you really to both of you for spending the time with us here tonight. I'm sure everybody's going to leave this conversation feeling a lot more um, a lot more informed about how the shoes are made, how you come up with the designs, um, a little bit more informed about the cushioning and the wide fit. So just search, um, tick those little boxes on the side to see which shoes have the wide fit and which have the cushioning and then those that's your selection there. Um, if you're after a mud claw, um, which comes in the precision fit, then um, my personal advice would be to go for the cross claw, which is the X claw. Um, is that, yeah, is that right? Yeah, we, yeah that's how we've, we've had a slight evolution of that shoe. So I would advise people if they're looking for a they're looking for a soft a shoe for soft and muddy ground like the like the mud claw, which is quite a which is quite a narrow fit. The best option is the Cross Talon 260 Ultra. Oh, so, oh no, that's not the one that I've just been sent. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's just answering Alex Dehoto's question just 
Um, yeah. he, he's advised to try a mud claw, but his four foot width is a five. So he's wondering yeah. which shoe he should get. Yeah. Also, I mean, it's worth saying, Clay, if there's anyone out there who's watching and, you know, they they want more information on this, you know, hit up our social media channels, uh, Twitter, Instagram. You know, we, we try, we're as quick as we can be in replying to people. Um, you know, we can we send us a direct message if you want, and we'll, we'll you know we'll do our best to help as much as we can. We've got a great customer service team here as well, who are you know really who are all runners as well, so they'll all give the best advice. So you know, please do get in touch with us, and we'll help you try and find that perfect shoe for you. Or if you're in any of the events that we just said, come and see us. You might yeah. actually see me or Lee <laughs> on a field, muddy field, on a Saturday. <laughs> Brilliant. That's great. Okay, so everybody, if you've got questions, don't suffer in silence. Don't think that there's not an Innovate shoe for you because there are 20 million of them. There's got to be one for you. Um, that's great. So I'm just going to read out some nice comments because people have been really enjoying this chat tonight. This is one of the um, most attended chats of the year, I think, so far. So it's great. Um, so we've got Sue Hewitson said, great interview and so interesting. Um, up to the summit says, what a cracking interview, guys. Brilliant chat, innovate in safe hands. Um, and Conrad Anderson, this was an absolutely amazing, informative live chat. Thank you, Claire and Innovate. Absolutely wonderful. Um, Alex Dehoto, whose question you just answered right at the end there, said, yes, that was a great chat. Thank you. Nigel Barnett, thanks for tonight, guys. And the person who suggested that I interview you guys in the first place, Guy Greatrex, top patron, says, this was so in-depth. Thank you for the insight into the amazing brand. So I think that we have um, well and truly covered um, uh, all the questions from from tonight. And uh, yeah, it just remains for me to say thank you so much to you guys. Um, and we'll all see you on the trails wearing our Innovate shoes. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, been good. Yeah, yeah thanks. Cool, I'll see you then guys. Thanks, cheers Claire, bye.